G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up an older Dell G7. It has the model number P82F. And what I'm wanting to see here is A, what I can upgrade, B, can I replace the thermal paste and potentially thermal pads, and C, can I upgrade the Wi-Fi card? So let's open it up and see what can be done. Right now, I'm just using a small triple zero Phillips head screwdriver. So it is a tiny one that I use for phones. And so far, the three screws along the front have been small. And the ones I've just pulled out now, no, they are the same length. I'll continue on. And these back ones here, I am missing one over here in this corner. When I get in there, the first thing I want to do is disconnect the battery. Just so there's no chance of accidentally frying anything. There we go, pull those screws out. I just got a nail under and lifted it up. There we go. And what are we going to see? I already see some odd work going on here with the antennas and the Wi-Fi card. Do have the battery over here, which is the connection here. And then what else do we see? Sadly, not too much else. It does look like that it has the option for a larger battery or potentially an NVMe drive over here. I don't think, I'm not seeing the cable for it, which would normally exist in a cage here. So I'm gonna have a look for it and see if I might have a cable here. We do have RGB backlight over here, which is not connected. But anyway, I'll go on to the battery. And let's see how we can disconnect this one. By the looks of it, it looks like a pull tab up, which is what it is there. So I'll just grab that tab and pull it up. Now I want to see how, what RAM we've got here and see whether or not that can be upgraded. So looking at it, we have four gig of PC4 3200. To remove that, we push these metal tabs on the end out. So like this. So if I grab a nail in each, that should lift up like that. This one almost looks like it's got some form of chocolate and probably thermal paste on the chip itself, single-sided. And if we have a look at the other side, what do we got? Fold this out, it lifts up, pull it out. We have eight gig of DDR4, 3200 megahertz. So this was not operating in dual channel mode. Typically if you have matched, it's matched sizings and speed of RAM, it will run in dual channel mode, which usually gives you about a 10% performance boost in video games. So I could have, let's say a single 16 gig here, or two eights, the two eights will outperform the single 16. How do we go about reinstalling this? We put it on an angle and pull down and that will click into position. So if I fold this up, should be able to see the pins down here. The pin here, I wanna put it in on an angle similar to this and then push down. So if I push into the gap here and have it lined up, then push down, that should click into position just like that. And with that in position, that should be fine. And what I'm going to replace it with is a 8 gig Crucial Stick, which is this one here. Pretty much purchase them from computer stores, Amazon, eBay, fairly common. And if I do the same with this, line it up here, push in, push down, and that should click into position just like that. We've now got 16 gig with two 8 sticks of 3200 megahertz. That should be perfectly fine. Next up, I want to have a look at the NVMe drive. I'm just curious what it is, but this will also give you an idea on how to replace it. That screw undone. This looks like more of a shield than anything. Or it might be a half height size one. Those two screws are done. Fold that out of the way. Looks like we've got a smaller SK Hynix NVMe here. I'll wiggle that out. Uh, see much in the way of a model number. Here we go. And that looks to be a 512 gig one by SK Hynix, but I haven't been able to find out too many more details. To put this in, it's very similar to the RAM. Put it on an angle, push down, and then screw it in. We don't even have to push down. Right, here we go. 
in and see how it's sitting up by itself. If I put the screw in first. And this looks like a MBMA heat spreader. Very, very budget one, but one nonetheless. There we go, that one in. This one up here. Next, I want to have a look at the Wi Fi side of things to see what's going under, under this tape. Hopefully, it's only the antenna connections on the Wi Fi card that are broken, not the antenna cables, which I'll explain further in a minute. Yep, looking at that, we have some smashed out Wi Fi antenna. I'm just going to fold this over. These are looking okay. So that means if I change over the Wi-Fi card to another one, we should be okay. Similar to the MVME, undo the Phillips head screw, let it lift up, and looking at this, there should be a circle around this pin here. There is not. So I'm going to replace that with another Wi-Fi card and we should be all good. And this one here that I've got is a Wi-Fi 6 compatible model, an AX201 NGW. Should be able to put this into position here. And put that screw back in, and hopefully these antenna connectors are okay. I'll find out in just a sec. Should just be able to hold this above it. And then push down, it should click into position. Clicked on. Next up, put this other one. So the primary antenna is connected. Time to get the auxiliary antenna connected. The secondary one's being quite bothersome. I'd suspect that the actual metal uh, outer layer is snapped inside of this, which means I probably won't be able to connect it. So I'm just going to go single antenna for now and the primary antenna. Beam Wi Fi 6 should still operate okay. Otherwise, it's a full antenna replacement is what would be required to get this back up to being fully functional. So I'm going to tape it down into here. Like that. And I want to tape over this. I'm trying to steer it out of the way. So fold it over here. Put some more tape on there. Like that. That should lock it into position. And as I say, that, that other antenna just came off. I'm probably going to need to tape that down too. So, that would be a much larger job that I'm not really wanting to do right at this exact moment. There we go. That's on there. Next up, I want to have a look at the cooler. Excuse my runny nose. normal Phillips head screwdriver. One, four, two, three, five, seven, <laughs> three, now yeah, looks like the fan will need to come out as well be potentially part of the cooler itself. This 
one should be a RTX 2060 and a I believe an i7 87 uh, i7 8750 uh, I believe it's a 6 core 12 thread processor Get one fan out of the way one fan out of the way flip that over going on over here, a bit more of that tape action. What have we got going on here? We have one completely stuffed thermal pad, two of them, we'll attempt to replace them. That one's I'll leave intact, but that one there, what have we got? That's touching on here I believe. It's doing a very poor job of it. So we'll replace the thermal paste while we're here. Thermal paste, put some alcohol, alcohol, isopropyl, isopropyl on the cooler itself as well. Some tissue paper. Some of the chip on the processor. Well, okay. Now, years ago, I did have an old Giga uh, Dell G5 SE, I believe it was. I think it had an 8300 i5, 16 gig of RAM, and a GTX 1650, 4 gig. This one was the big brother at the time. Go. Put down here too. Go. And what I might use is just some it's one mil thick thermal pad on here. Well, actually, this so I can here can be completely ignored, being there's no chips there. So put some on the other side. Here. Now, I haven't done any before or after testing. This is just a brand new, well, second hand laptop to me. Then I want to tidy up a little bit. There we go, that one there. Go okay, put that on there. Go. Okay, put that there. If it wants to stay there. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of staying there now. Now I'm going to use some um, MX4. Put that on here. Just smearing it around as I'm doing it. Make sure I get good coverage. Yeah, when it squishes down, that will push it around. Similar with the processor over here. There we go. That should do it. Cap back on it. Flip it up back over. And line it up. There we go. And one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Now I'll just repeat that. One, two, three, four, no, nope. four, five, six. Seven. Put the fans back in. Put them back up down here. There we go. These flat screws go into here. I'll have 
here as well. There we go. Another one over here. There we go. And from here, I'm going to pretty much close it up. Okay, now I just need to connect up back up the battery, which should be a matter of pushing it down over the top. <coughs> and then from here, the Wi Fi antenna still on, feels like it. And now, back cover back on. Okay. Yes, that is not the correct way. That is the way. We rotated during it. Just pushing down lightly, clicking it together. All those screws go back into it. And once you've done that, you should be right to power up your machine and continue using. Or at least if you've upgraded your NVMe, if you reinstall Windows on it, or clone it from your old one, RAM you should just need to put in and go, Wi-Fi card you may need to download the wireless drivers, but I hope that helps and I'll see you later, bye.